So I think it's really important to emphasise that uh, we have now, in countries where uh, treatment is available, uh, PNH used to be a life-threatening disease with a um, significant, significant mortality. Uh, treatment with ecolizumab has now changed that to patients having a near normalised life expectancy when treated. Um, and so I think we are now in a position to um, address more unmet needs within PNH. Um, that's certainly, um, we now have ravulizumab available in the UK, which is every eight week treatment IV instead of every two weeks. Um, Pegcetikiplan has just recently been approved for patients with extravascular hemolysis as well. There's lots of clinical studies going on with uh, proximal complement inhibitors um, but to address extravascular hemolysis where patients um, on um, C5 inhibitor have got C3 optimization and reduced red cell um, lifespan. Um, and this includes all factor B and factor D inhibitors and um, other more early compounds. Um, we're also looking at um, alternative options at blocking at C5 um, with um, either a combination of pazelimab and chemdisran or um, crubalimab, um, to name but a few. And so these are self-injection subcutaneous options. So having um, gone from a single option for patients with PNH as an IV treatment option, we're now moving towards a much more patient-focused um, delivery of treatment um, and a more personalised approach depending on the patient needs. But I, I would emphasise it's really important to involve the patients within all of these discussions and um, certainly the PNH patient support groups around the world are, are very um, involved with this.